guitar enthusiasts of every stripe and description, it's Steve, the OG Guitar Nut, and welcome to Guitar Nuts Anonymous. Uh, are we on episode 30? I guess I could have looked before I started filming. We'll figure it out. Sounds like about 30s, right? Um, what's new? Well, as far as what's new in the world of guitars, couldn't tell you. Um, between being very busy with work and my new musical obsession, which we'll talk more about later, I haven't been keeping up on things. I haven't been watching my usual YouTube channels and uh, programs. Um, so what's new? I don't know. Do some research. Find out. Um, check out some of the other wonderful channels out there, um, which doesn't mean you shouldn't still be liking, sharing, subscribing, clicking the bell, telling friends, and expounding on the virtues of this wonderful YouTube channel. Uh, do all those things, of course, and comment below and you know the routine. So anyway, uh, what did I want to talk about? Oh, um, I just checked. Um, last, uh, last I looked, we're up to somehow 680 subscribers. Now, how? I couldn't tell you. We were just celebrating the fact that we had 500 subscribers. It's jumped up to 680. I... No idea. Uh, I'm thrilled. But I had said when we hit 500, we were going to have a giveaway. And uh, I've been collecting the, uh, you know, entrance. Uh, for those of you not paying attention, it's a giveaway for your choice of one of three cool brand new Behringer pedals. The EQ700 Graphic EQ. The UO300 Ultra Octaver. Or the fan favorite SF300 Super Fuzz. Uh, just pick one of those. Uh, tell me below which you would choose if you're the lucky individual who gets their name picked. And uh, what I'm going to do is, since we're, we jumped so quickly to that number, I figured um, it was a 500 subscriber giveaway, but I didn't start till 500. When we hit 750, I'll actually make the drawing, which, given how fast things have been moving, shouldn't be very long at all. And then uh, I'll do another when we hit a thousand for something else, maybe a guitar even. We'll figure it out. But anyway, uh, you know, let me know which one of these guys you want, and uh, I'll pick the names. Uh, I was going to use a digital randomizer. Uh, I might even just write down names and throw them literally into a tinfoil hat, which I have one around here somewhere that I use for the cover of my CD. But anyway, the main meat and potatoes this episode is going to be talking about my custom... IYV Indian Vena made in Vietnam Super Rick, which was a hot rod reinterpretation of a classic Rickenbacker shape. Uh, I did the unboxing last time. Here it is. Um, before I did a more thorough review, I wanted to use it for a gig, which I did last weekend with my 80s alternative cover band ray gun. And I used this guitar exclusively the exception of one song, Goo Goo Muck by the Cramps, for which I used an old, uh, well, it's a replica of the first guitar I ever owned um, back when I was a kid. Uh, I had tuned to open E specifically for Goo Goo Muck because that song has a guitar in open E. But I used this for everything else. It was a full two set gig show. So basically an hour and 45 minutes, give or take, of music. I used this exclusively. And my observations were that uh, it is indeed a great guitar. There are some things I would have ordered differently if I'd have thought. Um, but overall, I have no real complaints. Um, two uh, negative observations right off the bat, I'll tell you. Pickups and electronics do need to be changed. Um, I've already picked out what I want. I'll tell you about that in a bit here. And these tuners are absolute shite. I uh, shouldn't be surprised. I mean, tuners are always a weak spot. Um, the nut didn't help any. The nut needs to be cleaned up. I'm going to clean it up with some sandpaper and files and then put in some kind of lubricant to help the strings travel. But the tuners were definitely a weak spot. I had trouble staying in tune, and the tuners feel... Um, what's the term I'm looking for? They're anything but smooth. They're, uh, I don't want to say crunchy, uh, chunky. 
I don't want to describe it. Um, you feel gaps in the gearing as you're turning. Um, it's just not, not a good experience. So I got through the gig um, and I enjoyed the guitar, but the tuning was driving me nuts. So what am I going to do? Well, um, I'm a big fan of uh, Guitar Fetish, GFS. If you're not already familiar, as well as having a couple of lines of pretty cool guitars that they sell, they also have a pretty comprehensive line of parts, including pickups, uh, at very, very reasonable prices. Um, I've picked out everything that I want. It comes to uh, $131, I think, with shipping. I'd already have made the order, but I've been broke at the moment. Um, I'm working a lot insofar as a lot of hours are being devoted to the job, but I'm not earning for a lot of hours. Let me explain. I'm a chauffeur, as many of you already know. If I do a pickup at 5 in the morning and then another at 11.30 in the morning and then one at 4 in the afternoon and one at 10 in the evening, okay, I might only be making eight hours of pay for that day, but I've devoted literally 14 hours of my day to the job um, and then some. Um, so I'm devoting full days. Sometimes I have one trip in the morning at 10 a.m., one at 5 p.m. I'm lucky I'm getting paid for four hours, but it's basically taking up my entire day. Um, now, I can bitch and moan about it, but it's the job I've chosen for myself, and until I choose something else, it is what it is. Point being, I don't have a lot of extra money these days, but I am putting in a lot of hours to the job. It is what it is. Soon enough, the winter will come. I'll have very little work at all. Um, then I'll have lots of time, very little exposable, exposable, uh, expoundable, um, very little extra money. You know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, the parts that I've picked out, uh, you know what? I'll, I'll share them with you. I, I found these GFS pickups. They're other humbuckers. They'll drop right in here. Uh, the particular models are on Nikos. They're supposed to offer the nice, warm, beefy low end of a PAF type with the jangle of like a Rickenbacker pickup, which is like everything I could possibly want in one humbucking pickup. Plus, I'm ordering the new wiring di uh, diagram, new wiring harness that has a built in push pull uh, to split the pickups. So I'll be able to have single coil and humbucking tones all at once with just pulling up, pushing down on the knob. The particular harness I'm buying is only available with two pots, a volume and a tone. I only have a volume, obviously, so I'm just going to clip the tone out and run with it. I think the wiring harness is like $29.95. The pickups are about $61 for the pair. And they have some interesting locking tuners that are direct replacements for these. Uh, that are another $40. Whatever it comes out to, it's it's like I said, $131 for all the parts. Um, and I think when I do get around to ordering them, maybe I'll just make an episode out of me throwing this guy in the workbench and swapping all the parts out. I should mention that the particular pickups and electronic wiring harness that I'm intending to purchase are what's called the, the quick plug system which means there's literally no soldering involved other than possibly the ground wire. Uh, everything is hooked together with little um, eighth inch plugs and sockets um, so that I could actually buy other sets of pickups and quickly drop them in and swap them out to try them without ever soldering or unsoldering anything, which sounds like a really cool system to me. So we're going to see how well that works. But now you're wondering, okay, so I addressed the tuning issues. What is it about these pickups that caused me to not be happy with them? Well, let me show you. Uh, I'm running through my standard old Boss Katana 50 here. And here's some clean tones. Actually sounds just fine here, right? This is in the center position, both pickups running at once, which actually sounds like I said, fine. 
Characteristic. It almost sounds like you ever heard of a cocked wah, where people would run through a wah pedal and not use it to do the whole waka waka thing, uh, but actually just use it as a tone filter and get kind of a nasal thing happening. So here's the bridge pickup by itself. I mean, it's it's a tone. It's a sound. But it's definitely not a sound I would want all the time. Um, it's more noticeable, I think, on cleans than on overdrives because overdrives have a way of being very forgiving with all sorts of things. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's. It's actually a tone that I kind of wish I could just put on a switch and access when I want it, but still have a regular bridge pickup tone. Um, but. Regardless, it's it's not suitable for what I want as it is. And just for the sake of argument, here's the neck pickup as well. Actually, the bridge in you know center position, I don't really have any complaints about. It's just mostly the bridge thing. But I'm gonna go ahead and swap it all out, along with the new wiring harness as I mentioned. Uh, you're probably also curious as to what it sounds like uh, overdriven. So let's. Let's go there and find out. Let's see, what do we got here? such a way as to wind up with that particular characteristic. It's it's bizarre. It's just It's a sound I wish I could get when I want it and then be able to switch it off. <laughs> um, you know, for a lead sound, it could be cool. It definitely cut through. But, uh, so anyway, yeah. Uh, now, as far as how did the guitar perform otherwise, like I said, I made the sounds work. Um, you know, running pedals and things and using a digital amp. So, yeah, it was passable. Plus, yeah, if I'm being honest, I'm only the rhythm guitar player. Uh, we've got Miss Elizabeth Day on lead guitar who's doing all the flashy stuff anyway. Um, so, yeah, it did the job, uh, but I could definitely be much happier with the sound and the tuning. Now, everything else. Uh, I weighed the guitar. Uh, that's something I should show you. Um, I invested in a fish scale. What's that mean? Well, Means I went on Amazon and bought one of these little dudes. Uh, people are always asking me. I've mentioned this before, but I'm going to do it again. Uh, on off. We've got uh, units, pounds. That's what we want. I wouldn't normally be comfortable hanging something from a tuner, but in this case, it'll be all right. Uh, unplug it. Because I don't want the weight of the cord to be getting in the way of an accurate reading. So let's see what we can hook up with here. Let's see. Jump around, jump around. Looks like 7.35 pounds. Uh, that's pretty darn darn reasonable by anybody's estimation, I should think. Especially for a large 
solid body like this, um, I was definitely concerned that this was going to weigh quite a bit since it's basically a solid body replica of a hollow body guitar. I'm sure the sound hole handle here helped uh, and their, their choice of timbers, no doubt. But uh, I'm real happy with the weight, very happy with the construction. I uh, mentioned in the unboxing about this unfortunate thing with how the, the neck joint, when I put it together, it chewed up the finish there. You know, I'm going to smooth it out with uh, some high grade sandpaper and just roll with it. I'm not that concerned about it. This is going to be a gig guitar, so it's going to get beaten, and that's fine. Um, if I had to do again, I would definitely have asked for a thinner neck, as I'd mentioned. This is kind of akin to a 58 Les Paul, if you've ever played one of those, or reissue. It's very hefty. It's not uncomfortable. It's just not what I'm used to. So I would have asked for a thinner neck. Uh, I put on strap locks already. I did that quickly. I'm really happy with the neck attachment system with these receivers and uh, the bolts rather than your standard kind of a plate situation. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, apart from the tuning issues, which, you know, it is what it is. It's an inexpensive guitar. And the tone of the pickups, which, to be honest and to be fair, I intended to, to swap out before I even got it. These were just going to be placeholders, essentially, so I'm not surprised. Uh, I couldn't be much happier with my purchase, honestly. Um, when you take the cost of these repairs, repairs, uh, replacements, and the initial, you know, charge for the guitar, which was like 310 with shipping, I'm still going to be into this thing for, for $450 or less for a gig-worthy guitar that looks cool as heck. Is exactly what I wanted. Yeah, in terms of design, um, custom order to my specs, you know, really, I, I couldn't be much happier, you know, um, and the uh, process of changing out these parts is going to give me good content for a future episode. So, hey, there's, it's, it's a no-loss scenario, you know, um, and uh, with that click, 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 quick plug system, uh, for the pickups and wiring, you know, I'll be able to audition some other sets of pickups in this in the future if I want to try different things. So, um, you know, I'm kind of interested in the uh, double coil humbucking uh, Dan Electro lipstick style guitar pickups that they also offer. Uh, which reminds me, uh, my dear friend uh, and former Incognito Cartel bandmate, uh, Tom Templeman, Check this out. He's the one that suggested the uh, dual lipstick tube humbucking pickups because he wants to get some himself, which he's going to do in his Super Rick Ivy guitar that he just put in an order for. He's using this as a template for his and having a 12 string version made. Um, and with Tom's permission, uh, here's a shot of his. Uh, mechanical drawing slash blueprint that he sent in and you'll see it's very similar um, he's going to uh, get his uh, you know do your standard things he might wind up swapping out his tuners I wouldn't be a bit surprised um, and he's going to swap out his pickups for the GFS double coil you know humbucking cat here um, yeah, lipstick tube pickups, which should sound really cool. Uh, it's supposed to have a big jangle. He wants a Rickenbacker sound, whereas I was looking for more versatility since we play all sorts of music. Um, Incognito Cartel primarily plays very 60s influenced uh, rock, so especially for 12 string, he's going to want that Rickenbacker sound. He and I both owned multiple 12 string Rickenbackers, genuine. Um, we want something we can take to a gig and not uh, have to baby, and uh, he's going to uh, no doubt immediately uh, get a hold of some sandpaper or scotch brite or whatever and take the gloss off his neck because he, like me, likes, you know, matte finished necks uh, for live performances, especially sticky summertime performances. So, uh, yeah, 
So very cool. Um, Tom is uh, the first that I'm aware of. I'm definitely not the last who's going to be making an order for Minion Vena, uh, you know, having seen this, video, this, video, this uh, video, much as I did after seeing Richard James, the Bald Shredders video. If you haven't checked out Richard, make a point of it. The cat's awesome. He's got a great entertaining show, as I mentioned before. So what else? Uh, did you want to hear more of this guitar? I don't know. Maybe you did. Some people actually say they enjoy hearing me play. Uh, you know. Um, there it is. It's not a tube amp, but it takes time to... Well, it, it wouldn't be warm up. It's... Uh, get started. Maybe it's like a computer. It has a startup time. I don't know. <laughs> this show for any amount of time knows that if I had something to complain about I wouldn't hold back because I don't nobody's paying me nobody's giving me anything for free nobody's even giving me a break um, although if anybody out there you know wants to I'm willing to listen you know I'm not saying I'm a sellout but I am saying stuff gets expensive you know uh, oh I wanted to tell you about the new obsession since a lot of people wonder well what have I been up to if you know, I've got, you know, my time between runs and the job. And what have I been doing if not researching other guitar gear? Well, I've long been a fan of electronic music. Uh, it's like I'll hear some techno or rave music and I'm all about it. Right until the singing starts or the rapping. And then it just, just goes down the toilet for me. Um, I love Depeche Mode, for instance. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Early Ministry, and uh, which is essentially Depeche Mode with a really bad attitude. Um, I've heard it described as Depeche Mode's angry little brother. Um, I love the stuff. And uh, I've actually been in bands before that perform that sort of thing with a lot of machines and Ableton Live on a laptop and uh, with guitars and electronic drums. Well, my obsession has become trying to figure out a way to basically come up with original music that has essentially the sound of that, like, early ministry, uh, dancey sounding, for lack of a better term, uh, upbeat, well, couldn't call it happy music, that's for sure, because nothing I do is happy sounding. Um, much like The Cure, happy sounding music maybe with not so happy lyrics, but the sound I like actually is kind of a more, not necessarily down tempo, but down tone. It's hard to describe. It's a uh, gothy, dark synth music, but yet danceable, if that makes sense. But before everybody tunes out and hits the unsubscribe button, with guitars, we make that clear. I definitely want to have guitars involved. I want to have, specifically, I want to be able to get my baritones involved. I want to be able to have a good reason to bust out the eight string that I bought a while back and do some heavy stuff on that. Um, you know, but with that kind of dark wave synthy thing going on. To that end, um, I've been trading off and selling a lot of guitars, uh, though I wasn't using anyway, mostly trading. Here on the local Craigslist and or Facebook marketplace and uh, trading off guitars for electronic stuff meaning you know synths and drum machines 
and sequencers. Oh my, uh, I, I'm looking over here because I've set up a station. Um, you know, I'm going to take a shot of it and I'll put it right here for you to see of my electronic workstation to give you an idea of what I'm doing. Now what I'm wondering is, since this is kind of my most recent obsession, uh, to go with all my other obsessions, is this something that I should talk about on this show, or should I start a new YouTube channel? And if I did, would I even have time? And do I want to start from scratch again? Or should I just have separate episodes on this channel, some that are strictly guitar nuts, and some that are the other side of my personality, which still is going to have guitars involved? I don't know. I'll figure it out. Um, I want more subscribers, not less. Um, so maybe I can get some people that are into this whole guitars and synths thing to come on board. And maybe they'll even find the other stuff interesting too. I'm sure there are other guys out there with walls of music machines that are interested in walls of guitars as well. I don't know. I'm sure you're out there, right? I can't be the only one. In fact, to that end, I even found a Facebook group for guitar and synthesizing music enthusiasts. There weren't a heck of a lot of people on the group, uh, 600 or something, but um, obviously they exist, we exist. Um, what do you think? I don't know. Tell me below. Would you be interested in me covering that side of things also? Uh, especially if I could keep up the number of episodes. Maybe I could put up two episodes a week. One specifically guitar nuts, ow. And uh, what about this electronic plus guitars thing. I, you know, let me know what you think, and I'll figure out what I'm going to do. Um, you know, I can go either way with it, I suppose. Uh, or I could just scrap the whole nine yards and just go back to being a guy who doesn't spend so much time and effort uh, having a channel. But I don't want to be that guy, because somehow I've attracted nearly 700 of you to come out here and watch this. Um, and we got a pretty cool little community. So before I check out one more time, subscribe and tell me which one of these pedals from Behringer you'd like me to send you if you were the lucky individual who gets their name drawn. Uh, it's not US only. I'll send them anywhere. They're relatively lightweight. It wouldn't cost too much of a fortune to send them around. Um, even for a handful of fans in Australia, uh, it would cost me more to ship the pedal than the pedal would cost. But I know how much things cost out there. I've got a couple of friends in Australia, and I've heard uh, you guys pay through the nose for stuff, and it's a shame. But uh, if you are the lucky person who wins, I'll be happy to send it to you. So as I said, all you got to do to win is subscribe and tell me below which pedal you want. It's that simple. We hit 750. I'll make the drawing. You know what? I you know I think I'll do. I will go ahead and put the names on paper and actually put them in a hat, a bowl, a basket, something. And I'll actually draw, you know, shake it up and draw on camera. Um, then you can see it happen. Maybe, you know, I'll, I'll do it that way. What the heck? Um, I've never seen anybody do it that way. Uh, there's no reason they couldn't, though. It seems to me that that'd be the most honest way. If they do a digital app drawing thing, you've got to take their word for it. Maybe if I just do it this way in a you know, a big calendar or something, you can actually see it happen in real time, and yeah, yeah, maybe I'll do that. So, like, subscribe, share, comment below, make sure you're entered to get, win one of these pedals, and until I see you next, keep on keeping on, as I used to say in my old podcast. Uh, be cool, stay frosty, be good to yourself and others, for crying out loud. Play the damn guitar. This is Steve. Talk to you again soon. Out.